it, everyone. It is Kay Jones coming at you with another video. Um, I have a Dagonoff task and I was thinking perhaps it would be good for me to um, do a little Dagonoff soloing guide. It may not be perfect, but I'm sure it will teach people a lot. So um, I'm going to get my gear set up and then we'll get going. All right, guys. So let's go over my Dagonoff King setup. Now, this is like a really chill guide, and obviously your setup's going to be different if it's like your first time, and especially if you're a lower level. When you're maxed range, mage, and melee, it's going to be a completely different story. Um, so let's just take note in that. The more experience you have, well, in my book, experience outranks everything. Um, so if this is like your, you don't PVM a lot, and this is like your first boss you're doing, you know, or bosses, I should say, then obviously your setup's going to look completely different. You shouldn't follow my setup. Now, what will help you is basically me talking about why, why this, why that, based off of my experience, why I chose this gear, and also taking y'all to Dagonauts on this video and showing you how I do my run. But you need to set up your gear based on your what you're comfortable with and what feels right to you. So let's get into it. Um, first, my goal is to kill all these Dagonoths in one trip. Trip. My task has a hundred and two of them, which is not many. Um, you're saying 102 Dagonoths in one trip, that's insane. No, it's easily done. Um, actually, not in the beginning, you may have only 15 dead, but when you upgrade your gear and you get to a certain point in the game, it's doable. Now, you're gonna notice that I'm not bringing the best gear. You know, I have the capability to bring an Inferno Cape, an Assembler, uh, Torture Anguish, but that's not the whole point of Dagonoth Kings. What the most important is hybridization. Because Dagonoth Kings, you have a Major, you have a Ranger, and a Meleeer. So if you understand the combat triangle in RuneScape, you'll understand that a Major is weakest against range, okay? And a Meleeer is weakest against Mage. And a Ranger is weakest against Melee. So you may want to write that down. So let's go over it one more time. A major is weakest against range, a melee is weakest against mage, and a ranger is weakest against melee. So you basically want to have all three forms of combat. And so if you don't have relatively good stats in all of those, then maybe these aren't the bosses for you. Next, I'm an Iron Man, so I should have what mains can have, but that's not necessarily true. Main accounts don't have money to afford some gear. It's completely subjective. So let's get into it. So instead of bringing a torture or anguish, I bring an amulet of fury. A fury, why? Torture and anguish is purely offensive on range and melee. Same with an occult, I think. Um, so an occult is for mage. And so with the amulet of fury, you're going to have defensive stats. You're going to have uh, prayer. Um, which an anguish and fury doesn't have. And you're also going to have hybridization of bonuses in mage, range, and melee. Next, I brought the brimstone ring. It drops some hydra, and it's really good at hybridization, which is overall good stats in mage, range, and melee. And next, we have barrow's gloves, not ferocious, because once again, that hybridization... And with the Max Cape, it enables me to have an Assembler and to have good stats in Defense, Prayer, Mage, Range, um, and Melee. If you don't have a Max Cape, think about bringing in 99 Range Cape. Because <clears throat> if you think about that, you have an Accumulator added to that to pick up your darts or whatever you use. And also, it's got some defensive stats, some prayer, and is a decent melee cape and mage. Um, and if you don't have a 99 range cape, then consider, or max cape, consider just bringing your assembler, um, in my opinion. But that's completely up to what you're comfortable with. With my range switch, I have a four-way switch. A set of hybridization boots that may be good is the boots of brimstone, but to me, I just don't find those worth it. I think the offensive stats on the Picasians and the primordial boots are just 
they outweigh it. For the mage switch, you don't really need much of a mage sw switch except your staff. Now, obviously the hybridization is going to help you with that magic bonus, but that staff, uh, Rex, which is the melee of the Dagonoth Kings, is really weak to magic, so you'll be able to hit even with Bandos on. And while you're at Dath Dagonoth Kings, you're going to have these random Spinlop creatures attacking you with range, so you kind of want to have your Bandos on anyway. Now, let's start going over my inventory, which looks probably really bizarre. You're probably like, uh, no food and one brew? Yeah. Um, and I don't bring a Ceridoman God Sword or anything like that. Some people like to because it gives you on specialization, sometimes some really good prayer and health. I just think the Bullet Pipe really does really well on the healing aspect. On Prime, Prime is the major, which you range. And, uh, well, let's just go over it. So I've got two super combats and two super ranging potions. I think the, the important part about those is that having high, high stats and really good offense really helps because you need to kill them in succession and kill them fast before another one pops up because you don't want to have to flick prayers between a major and a ranger supreme and prime you want to just pray mage if the major's up basically you don't want more than one dagonoth king on top of you and if you have really good offense then you shouldn't have that problem um especially when you're learning you want to kill them pretty relatively quickly now obviously if it's your first time you're probably going to have an inventory full of food or brews because you're learning and that's completely normal you're probably also going to be a lower level i don't have any uh recommended stat um recommendations i think it's up to you and you can go down there and just solo rex which is the melee alone and mage him in a safe spot and have really really low stats to get a berserker ring as an iron man so it's all sub subjective, I guess, but in my opinion, I think 90 plus stats is really smart, which means 90 mage, 90 range, 90 attack, strength, and melee, unless you're just camping Rex, which is the meleeer. Um, and then 70 plus prior is recommended in, I would say. Now, you do get poison down there, so you've got Sandview Serum, which per is like a super restore, but also is an antidote, super antidote. Then we've got Antidote Plus, Plus, Plus. Back in the day when I did Dagonoth Kings, I didn't have the Plus, Plus, Plus. I just read how to regular antidote. Um, that's fine, but you'll have to bring a lot more of them if you plan on camping. Um, this should last me, whew, I think each sip is like 12 minutes, so... <laughs> This is like an hour and a half plus worth of sips. This will last me forever. I could probably even put one away. I brought alkables for alking um, things that were cost a lot of money. Dagonoth kings will drop like dragon med helms, uh, ruin items, um, some nice armor that's alkable. So I bring that. And to save inventory space, you need your pet rock if you don't have a friend that's going in with you to help you get in. And I'll show you how to utilize that. You need a ruined throwing axe to get in, and I'll show you why. The reason why is because this not any other throwing axe. Don't bring dragon, that's a waste. Bring ruin. You can't bring anything below ruin because you really need that special attack. I brought this soul bearer, which you get from completing a mini quest, which is um, bear your soul. Dagonoth Kings, when you're learning, don't bring this. It's not worth it. But if you've been going a while and you're familiar, Dagonoth Kings um, drop a lot of insold heads. So I just p use them on this soul bearer that's charged with blood runes and they put them in the bank, which is really nice. And it's a waste not to bring it because, well, if they drop so many insold heads. That's a lot of prayer XP. And even as a max player, like, do it, bro, you know? Um, and then we've got, um, one stamina, you can bring two. If you don't have stamina and you're doing run energy potions, definitely bring, like, three run energy potions. <laughs> but stamina, one should be okay. You can do two if you're not familiar and you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off. If your first 
first time at Dagonoth Kings, I would bring two. Um, and obviously, you're going to switch out a lot of these prayer potions for food if you've never been. Now, I don't have a Sanguinesti staff, but that would be dope because you will uh, proc some heals, which will let really help but it shouldn't be an issue because I have a blowpipe and um, if you flick your prayers correctly and you do what you're supposed to do technically you should be just fine at Dagonoth Kings your gear does matter too so the better the gear the better your stats the easier they're gonna be and of course experience outrings everything so one day I'd like to upgrade that to Sanguinesti because that would just be an epic upgrade but Trident is more than doable you can bring an Ibin staff, but just bring a trident. All right, so let's get to it. This is not a perfect setup. This is just what works for me from my experience. So with the max cape, obviously I have teleports. You don't if you don't have a max cape or some kind of teleporting cape. Um, so go ahead and bring a tele tab for your case. Everyone's setup is different. I just said don't follow mine. I'm just explaining why I brought everything in my inventory so you can figure out what you want to bring based off of what you're seeing here um, and also what you're going to see with me doing my Dagonoth King trip. So we're going to go to Waterbirth Island. That's why I went to my house. <clears throat> and we're going to go ahead and head out. Usually, um, you know, I would have ate like a piece of angler or something like that to put my health above max health, but I don't know, I just didn't, but that's an option. So, the water birth uh, cave entrance is here. And I'm going to show you all how to get to Dagonoth Kings. Now, note, I do have a guide on my channel that shows basically how to get to Dagonoth Kings in Old School RuneScape. And you just follow my character and you'll get there. But I'm going to show it in this video anyway because I got a bunch of comments saying that sucked. So, obviously, it sucked because... I guess my head was covering the mini map or something. Who the hell knows? Um, so, I'm going to take a drink. <sighs> Getting all refreshed before Dagon of Kings. This is not a perfect guide. This is just for entertainment and that y'all can learn something from it. So, going down there, um, if it's your first time, don't bring a pet. The heron is my favorite pet in the game, and it's my good luck charm, so I'm bringing it. Even if I die, I'll pay one mil. That's fine. Um, <laughs> pray melee going in. Um, you can die down here. Is it a safe death? No, but, you know, it'll be okay. I think there's, like, that coffer or whatever on RuneScape that saves all your stuff that you can buy back. Okay, so this is where that... Um, Take a sip of my stamina. You're going to walk over here, drop your pet rock, go to the other side, open the gate. Your character, I thought, would go automatically in, but it doesn't. Take the pet rock before you leave and then continue. We're going past these boulders, which are just scary rock crabs that are a lot stronger. So you're going to follow my character. Okay, and I highly suggest you watch this before going down there um, because the path is kind of confusing if you've never been. So put on your rune battle axe, throwing axe I mean, um, and put on your spec because you need to hit this door support. So you're going to watch this spec hit. Ready? Watch. It's going to bang all of them and go down. So then pass this section. Okay, cross, and you need to pray mage before you go down the stairs. Make sure your auto retaliates off. That could be a problem. So you can hit the mage, and then you can switch to range when you're down here. The next thing you're going to switch to is melee, because you're going to have some more giant rock crabs. Make sure your stamina is on. Range. Just follow my character. We're going to go down the stairs over here. I think it's mage when I go down. I can't remember. Yeah, it's mage. Mage hits the hardest, so pay attention to that. Mage holds mage on and hold mage again. Continue. I think this is range. Nope, melee. Sorry. <laughs> it's hard to remember all these rooms. She kind of wing it. As soon as I see the creature, I'm like, I know it's a prey prey range.
and climb up this ladder over here. It is a lot of running, so your stamina will go out. Mine certainly did. Pray range still. I think it's range down below still, but pay attention here. Um, yeah, it's range right now. This will change, I think, as you go down this hill. Right now it's range. But when you climb down this ladder, I think then it may be melee. Let's see. Okay, so we're almost there. Pay attention. You've got these rock lobsters. Pray melee. At a certain point on this path, you're going to switch about this halfway mark to mage. Um, you got all these lobsters, but now you're going to switch to mage whenever you see this little walrus major. And then keep your mage on because that's what's going to hit you for the hardest, especially if you have bandos or any kind of melee gear on. So, okay, now we're going to go over this route to this safe spot over here so we can prep for dag kings. Huzzah! Beautiful. There's this little crack here. Peek in the crack. We've got one adventure in the slave cave. Slayer. Wow. Slave cave. Wow. I'm so, I'm so tired. Slayer cave, one adventure. And three adventures in the standard cave. So, obviously we've got three people doing Dagonoth Kings in one cave. And for the Slayer cave, which I should be in because I'm an Iron Man and I don't want people crashing me. And I'm on Slayer task. That's where we need to go. But we've already got someone on this world. Slayer... To get Dagonoth on Slayer task is best because you can use your imbued Slayer helmet, which gives you, which you can imbue from Nightmare Zone, I think, but it allows you basically to have 16% more attack, defense, and um, accuracy on mage, range, and melee. So we need to hop worlds, and I'll be right back, guys. So once again, I just kind of want to go over the fact that this is a really unorthodox guide. I'm basically going to kill these dagging, dag, dag kings and wow, sounds like I said drag kings, drag kings, uh, drag, I meant pff, dag kings and um, it'll give you some help to learn and basically see the rhythm and everything to kind of figure out wor what works best for you. So I'm still hopping worlds here. Oh wait, we have no adventures in the Slayer Cave, which is what we want. Obviously, you can only kill the Dagonoth Kings on task in the Slayer Cave, which is good. So, you'll have less people crashing. So, what I like to do here is brew up, because you probably lost some health running down. Um, and when you run into the cage, you're always going to prioritize Mage. It's the most overwhelming thing running into the cave because you're going to have all three Dagonoths potentially on you. When you run in, don't just go down the ladder and just bolt in there. Chill by the ladder and you'll see why. Um, hopefully you'll only get Supreme, which is the Ranger, on you. So anyway, prioritize Mage, the Major Prime at all times. Um, that's like your go-to prayer. So I went ahead and just uh, brewed and... Um, Okay, they just came out and went back in. Brewed and restored. So, and now, I don't, I'm not sure what the hell they're doing. They're kind of creep. What the hell are you doing? Okay, we're going to do range and super combat. Okay, so we need to... I'm scared they're going to go in the Slayer Cave. They're not. Okay, pray mage and we're going to go in. I'm not sure what they're doing. They may be trying to arrange it. But we're going to go in the Slayer Cave... Okay, so I have no Dagonoth Kings on me currently at this moment. But Supreme should be coming. There you go. Supreme should easily... So I'm trying to avoid Dagonoth Prime. Prime is the major and will hit the hardest. Rex may come over here in a second and Rex will be the meleeing you. But your biggest priority is that Prime, which is the... Major. I'm praying range against Supreme. Rex has found me. And we have Rex, but that's okay. This is really not the order you want to go in either. Um, there should be a safe spot, I think, for Rex. But um, right now I'm just trying to kill these all really quickly. Oh, we've got Prime coming over. So here's what we're going to do here. We got Prime. I got Rex. I'm going to try to safe spot Rex. So... This little tile marker that I have is a place to save spot Rex so he won't hit me. So I'm going to kill him with Mage because he's the melee -er, And I'm going to get him down so I can move on to Prime. Um, I'm also going to drop this Rune Throwing Axe because I don't have inventory space. Okay. Die please because, yeah. 
Okay, now we're gonna switch to blowpipe and we're gonna quickly get this uh, prime down. So, as you can see, blowpipe pretty much brought me back to full health, which was really nice. I'm gonna drop my stamina because I don't need it and I wanna pick up these Dagonoth bones. Um, do I recommend anything but a blowpipe on prime? I guess you could get away with the ruined crossbow, but your damage output's so important. Um, it's probably best to not do anything with blowpipe below Addy darts. Okay, so all of them are dead. Um, in seven seconds, Supreme is about to pop up. Supreme is the ranger. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on. You melee the ranger. So let's kill him. Um, and you can flick Pidey. You don't have to, like, have it on the whole time. Um... But yeah, that's like the hardest part, honestly, is getting them all down the first time. Because now, as you can see, I'm just praying range and I'm just chilling with this Dagonov. Like, we're just chilling like villains. And then I've got 17 seconds or 15 seconds or something like that on Rex. So Rex, you kind of want to keep your um, bandos on because of these spin lops. The spin lops attack you with range and mage but mostly range and bandos will protect the best against range attacks because it has really high range defense but yeah and obviously i'm just seeing a bunch of crap on the floor um sorry about that but yeah i'm just ranging this guy and taking notice that the um that, that basically prime is popping up in 12 seconds and prime is the major so, we're just chilling here. Um, Prime is going to pop in four seconds, so I will go ahead and put my prayer on. Um, he hasn't seen me yet, which is very normal if you're in the corner of the room like this. Um, but he will. And Prime hits the hardest, once again, the major. Um, I'm going to take the Ensouled Dagonoff head in a bit. Um, and put that in my soul barrier, which I told y'all I brought because they drop a lot of insult heads, which is absolutely true. Okay. I just don't have the inventory space. That tends to be a big problem. And in six seconds, we have Supreme coming up. So I'm going to go ahead and put on Rigor to try to kill this guy faster. The worst situation you can be in is having, um, Prime or, and Supreme on you which is really, really bad because Supreme does pretty darn good damage. All right, now immediately I switch to um, the correct prayer. And we got a five shark drop over here. That really worked out. They do drop food, so, um, but you really don't want to hear spend time eating it because obviously um, you want to focus on doing damage to stay in the loop. <clears throat> Another fun fact, now I can pick up this ensouled Dagonoth head. Damage is really helpful because it gives you more time to be able to manage your inventory and pick up loot, you know? So, but anyway, we've got um, Supreme down in a few seconds and then we're going to get Rex up. Supreme is the ranger and you melee it, as you can see. I love also all of the, oops, um, sorry, I'm just trying to pick up the loot here. <laughs> I love all of the pets also that you can get here. Okay, and my the bones don't automatically come noted. That's because I did the Elite from a Nick Diary, which allows these bones to be noted, which is wonderful. Oh, some loot. Some Sears ring, nice. Some loot. Let's see if I can get anything else this trip. I know a lot of people probably think you can't do 100 kills per dag trip. I actually was questioning whether or not I could do it. And especially since I haven't done dags in a really long time, but I am here and I'm still going and I have seven left. And as you can see, I have 94 noted bones in my inventory. Um, I got a Sears ring too, so that was dope. But yeah, it's totally doable. Um, another setup that people bring is Blood Barrage. Um, I think I used to do that and then I stopped because it slowed down the DPS like too much. Like they'll Blood Barrage the Spinlops or something like that. 
or Rex. Um, and it was just too slow. I can't remember, but that is definitely an option um, that I forgot to mention. But you also need like wicked high mage level for that, like 92 mage or something. So, but yeah, that's totally doable. And I think I'll definitely kill six more of these since I've got the prayer and the antidotes and some food. And yeah, it's looking good. So, I don't know. I hope this guide helped y'all. So, anyway. Thanks for watching and like and subscribe. Bye guys.